Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and no, I'm not going on a safari, as you can see. But if I was, I'd be damn ready. Now this is why you need to be ready. So, you can get rain, snow, sleep, freezing rain, blizzards, whatever it may be, you can get it all. Alright? But if you have some way to keep yourself warm and dry, and you have an emergency pack with you at all times in your vehicle, especially if you are traveling, you have a very good chance of survival. And when it comes to survival, it doesn't matter what you look like. A baseball cap would be good, a knit cap would be good, alright? But if you're stuck out in the elements, you want something that's waterproof, okay? And the, the sides will flop down on this bad boy here, okay? And then they just snap right back up into place. And it does have the, the sunshade in the back, but it also does keep all the elements and everything off the back of your, so it doesn't go down your jacket, your coat, anything that you're wearing. First thing out of the bag, right up top, rain gear. Now you make sure you have a good rain gear in your uh, emergency pack that you're gonna be taking with you. But if you can throw this stuff on over the top of what you're already wearing, that will be a bonus and that will keep you warm and dry. And that is the whole key. A tarp. Well, at least you have some way that you can pitch a shelter to try to get out of the elements. Sleeping bag. You can get them there real compact like this, having some way to keep warm if you have to lay down on the ground or something like that. Now you want some way to cook, all right? Now in here, I keep one of these little stoves like this, but more likely, if you can just get a fire going and you have a Stanley cup like this, you can cook in these, you can pour water in these, you can sterilize, uh, whatever you need to do. And uh, these Stanley cups are worth their weight in gold. So you gotta have a cook system. In the bottom one down here, I'm not gonna pull them out. I have a change of clothes. So this way, if my clothes do get wet, I can take and change into my regular dry clothes. You wanna make sure that you have cordage, some type of maybe a little lantern, some freeze dried food. All you need is hot water. Two bottles of water I carry in here. I have one of these, it's called a Bible Shack. All right, now you can take I carry a tarp because my theory is put this down on the ground. Now we come into the secondary pouch. Now this is a 60 liter pack right on the top. My portable little first aid kit and my waterproof pouch. I also have two cans. I have chili with beans and some beefaroni. They both have the pull tops. Get yourself uh, the army issue, the old style can openers. Bank line. This stuff is great if, I mean, I don't leave home without this stuff. Always make sure you have bank line, because um, that stuff is so strong, it'll hold anything. I also carry a knife, and inside this thing is a huge, huge towel. And this way here, you can help dry yourself off. I have this little pouch on the top. I'm not gonna pull everything out, um, but there's a toothbrush, there's uh, Q-tips, there's some wipes, there's soap, um, a little bit of everything. This way here, you don't know what's gonna happen. I carry three sticks of fat wood in the very bottom of that bag right there, all right? Because this is really great to get a fire going. On these side pouches, uh, this one here is basically just fire starter. I have my uh, cotton balls that are soaked in Vaseline, which they, one spark, boom, you know? I have a box of matches. I have some more fire, fire starting stuff, deck lighter. You know, all that kind of stuff. On this side, a map of my area. I also have a right in the rain notepad that I've talked about in several of my videos. Flashlight, more cotton swabs, you know, just on the chance. Fire steel, multi-tool, you know, all that kind of stuff. We've got a little bit of everything in this pack. Now, I do carry these steaks. Now, you don't have to carry steaks with you. You can make your own out in the woods. Now, in this pouch here, I'm not gonna pull all this stuff out. I'm just gonna tell you, there's just a ton of cordage. I have some way to sharpen my knife. You know, you just never know how much cordage you may need. So I do carry extra with me. Everything in a nutshell. So you say you wanna get a small pack. All right, you don't have to have a big pack like this. You don't have to have that. You can have a small pack. This whole pack fully loaded weighs about 23 and a half pounds. But you wanna make sure that you have either a blanket, a sleeping bag, you could get away with just doing a survival shelter because this will build you a shelter. You will need a still need some type of a cook system, although you could eat this right out of the can. But if it's ice cold, it's probably not going to be that good. 
a cooking system. So you want to get maybe one of these little Stanley pots. Make sure you have a knife, you know, a good sturdy knife. And the most important thing you want to make sure that you have is a first aid kit. So you could really will this down. Um, you do want to make sure that you have a change of dry clothes. I would also suggest making sure that you have rain gear and a hat, um, whatever kind of hat that you would like. Make sure that you stay warm and dry. Also suggest in your pack that you would have either waterproof matches, um, a Vic lighter, something of that long of that lines, because this way here you have some way to start a fire if you needed to. All right, hopefully you wouldn't need this kind of stuff and maybe you know somebody can find you and, and everything else but you never know if it's a real bad storm a blizzard or whatever else there's probably not going to be a lot of people out on the road and if you were just lucky enough to get stuck in it and you're sitting on the side of the road well eventually either you're going to have to make a decision you're going to have to leave or you're going to sit there and wait it out but if you have some of this stuff you have ways of surviving now if say if you were stuck Maybe you had to get out of the car and start a fire to cook up your water to eat your dehydrated food. Maybe it's something you just always want to have in your vehicle. You know, a lot of people, maybe they don't want to carry it with them all the time. You know, I could understand that to a certain point, but if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling or something like that, especially if you travel with your job or in that situation, like I've been saying, having an emergency pack with you in your trunk, you know, nobody can see it. And this way here, if something happens, you can survive. And don't worry about what you look like, you know, pick you out a nice funky hat. As long as you stay warm and dry, that's the key to the whole situation. Get yourself your backpack, get your bag ready, put it in your vehicle and be ready. But the key to have an emergency pack is so that you can survive in an emergency situation. And if you have a pack with you, your chances of survival in, in a emergency situation are very, very high. 